Hi all, let's look at another mega clash, Leela against Stockfish, the top rated chess engine in the world. So this is Leela ID 11089. The Leela ID can't change during this competition. So this is in stage two, rapid rumble, 15 minutes with a five second increment. Let's have a look. They've played this opening before, just colors reversed in a previous round. E4 from Leela, C5, C3, E5. These are the four ply or half moves given to both engines. So black is playing quite an unusual move with e5, this gaping hole here on d5. Bishop c4 is played. In my chess base live book, it indicates this is more popular with this continuation. Um, for example, here, why it's getting a small edge. That's pretty sharp stuff, uh, actually. So anyway, bishop c4, knight f6, knight f3. We have d5, so the whole issue is... Uh, being resolved it seems uh, by stockfish e takes e4 knight e5 bishop d6 okay so very very interesting here already this opening uh, white is threatening if bishop e7 d6 clearly for, for knight takes f7 uh, so we have bishop d6 d4 black castles bishop f4 C takes, C takes, and now knight takes d5, so regaining that sacrificed pawn, temporary pawn sack, relying on a neat, a neat little tactic, bishop b4 check, to discover an attack against the bishop. Knight c3, queen takes d5, leader castles, bishop takes c3. Uh, if the queen moves back, preserving the bishop, then queen e2, this position should be okay for white with a small edge so okay bishop takes c3 was played b takes so Lila has hanging pawns here in the center f6 knight g4 not too many other squares bishop takes queen takes knight c6 a4 queen c4 so if we take stock here <laughs> for this stockfish game uh, that happens to me a lot of puns uh take stock here uh bishop against knight seemingly blockadable pawns on light squares away from the color of the bishop uh, it seems a, a dynamically balanced position at the moment queen d7 plunging into hit b7 and you might think well hold on the center collapses here doesn't it rook f7 was played on queen takes c3 taking here knight takes uh, this position it seems as though yeah there's dangers like queen d5 check so let's follow this through it seems here white should be okay this position there's enough pressure to justify being a pawn down it should be okay and if black tries for more as an example then this is horrible with hitting f5 well horrible as in but it's totally equal here so uh, rook f7 queen f5 rook e7 again if we have a look at this you might be thinking to take the center out d5 though here and then queen e6 is nasty uh, a little bit nasty enough to equalize anyway this this scenario is enough to equalize going all the way down to this line equal so rook e7 rook fc1 explicitly protecting c3 now b6 so has black got a sufficient blockade against Leela? rook a b1 Okay, now rook d8 was played here, and we have queen b5, knight a5, just protecting the queen, not taking. If taking, it seems the hanging pawns might come to life, actually, with rook b4 now uh, to stop knight c4, the blockade. And then bishop drops back here, and now c4 becomes possible as well. White actually gets an advantage there. So knight a5, maintaining a light square blockade, against the hanging pawns h4 the march of the form pawn one of leela's favorite winning strategies it seems rook e e8 rook b4 queen f7 queen f5 rook d5 the queen drops back rook d d8 h5 the form pawn's going to be installed rook d5 rook b5 knight c4 yes uh, this does allow the knight c4 blockade now this move rook b5 but the pawns attacked 
we want to install the form pawn rook cb1 we have rook d7 uh, on knight a3 taking here should be okay uh, for white this position should be okay uh, so we have rook d7 okay so knight a3 might actually be on the cards rook b4 f5 rook b5 now so there's the threat of rook takes f5 no time for knight a3 it seems rook f8 h6 the form pawn is installed and yeah it's like a goal hanging pawn but uh it needs a corner kick you know something to get to that goal hanger to be able to head the ball in so to speak uh, so bear that in mind at the moment knight a3 is threatened again rook d1 queen e7 rook b4 queen e6 protecting the knight yep now d5 here queen f7 rook d4 rook c5 d6 now yeah there seems to be a strong pawn here as well uh, we have queen e6 as an alternative if taking and then trying to surround that pawn g4 is actually it seems sufficient uh, for white to have an equal possession and there's no problem here this scenario so uh, queen e6 uh, we have rook b1 knight a5 queen e3 knight c6 rook goes back rook c4 rook b5 rook takes a4 now in conjunction with this form pawn yeah actually there's another route almost around the queen side potentially uh, this pawn might have been getting in the way sometimes on the a file and rook bd5 is played and here yeah it's starting to be a bit tricky for black after taking that pawn is there going to be a revenge for taking the a pawn that's happened in quite a few of leaders decisive wins the situation here the rook goes back in fact and this is it seems to be a critical position which was pointed out I checked with analysis on the day and I've been waiting to show you this major analysis of this particular position so if I've been a bit superficial up to this point it's here at move 43 which is of major interest I, I believe to check out leader played queen d2 it seems there's a different way to tackle this position which does revolve in a lot of variations around getting a corner kick in basically for this form pawn <laughs> if, if we want to use a simplified metaphor and it's queen e2 actually sacking the c3 pawn and you can see the variations in the pinned comment of this uh, of, of the comments section that I've checked out Let's go with rook takes c3, queen b5, subtle stuff. Now, black's a bit tied down. The rook has to protect the knight. And sometimes also queen a6 to c8 is dangerous. Uh, now, let's say queen f7, bishop g5. Now, in this position, variations with f4 are quite interesting to consider because it looks as though e3 might be dangerous. Uh, so, let's have a look. Queen b2 queen e2 let's say b5 rook takes b5 hitting uh, not hitting anything but let's carry this on g takes bishop e7 rook b6 queen e3 queen b3 it looks as though black yeah black's getting into difficulties here. again that first rank in conjunction with the form pawn as this shows is extremely dangerous it's winning totally winning position uh yeah so you know if here then there's rook f8 checkmate the form pawn covering some key uh, escape squares there yeah good stuff no let's not consider f4 let's consider queen e6 as an example queen a4 queen a7 queen a1 rook c2 queen a4 rook c3 now this toying can be stopped with queen a6 so yeah the queen to pass the corner kick in basically for the form pawn yeah it's queen c8 check is a big threat uh now here uh for example knight before actually 
queen a4 there is good very very strong not uh, queen c8 check is stopped because of the rook so but here there's queen a4 uh, so hitting the knight hitting the rook and there's also things like bishop e7 to interfere the queen protecting the rook so that's to be borne in mind so say knight takes queen takes threatening queen c8 check now knight f6 this is just crushing here bang sorry queen c3 and now bishop e7 threatening mate from over here well actually the knight's protecting it at the moment uh, but this is this is uh, very 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 dangerous uh, so black's actually kind of stuck in the scenario okay the knight holds g7 the queen holds c8 but what does actually black do here in this position black is actually totally overloaded and i would like to prove it to you now the basic proof is is that if ever the queen moves away then there's queen c8 check uh, crashing through the form point is actually completely triumphing here uh, but let's give more resistance to this position uh, and say a5 so remember the knight covers g7 but here what happens is check now if queen f7 then we're back to that check and that's crushing of course so the king's pushed to the corner here uh, with king h8 and now rook c1 threatens queen c8 this is crushing this position uh, after say g5 queen e6 and the point is rook c7 yeah the rook is kind of trapped and this is now winning pawn over here this is absolutely devastation uh, for black so that's a very very uh, beautiful uh, idea of that double pawn sacrifice uh, just to check that out yeah this this position is basically pretty gone for black uh, whatever way it's cut here uh, another alternative e3 here uh, let's just get the gist of this here bishop g5 queen e4 rook going back rook c5 queen a6 be able to play queen c8 check potentially potentially the knight moves to protect c8 this scenario is also very good after rook e7 white ends up using the form point in an end game scenario basically threatening checkmate and hitting the knight so that wins a piece and that should be a winning position so yeah there does seem to be a huge number of scenarios after queen e2 which appear to be very very favorable uh, to white uh, so rook a4 can be ruled out quickly with queen b5 hitting both and just taking there b5 can be ruled out with queen b2 queen a3 and this scenario the queen seems to infiltrate on the queen side uh, with the undertone of the form pawn this is actually really dangerous now threatening things like queen c8 uh, so for example here actually rook b5 is strongest rook b7 and yeah white ends up better in this scenario uh, rook c5 as an alternative we can take that and just play queen a6 this scenario is very favorable uh, check that's just winning material after taking rook takes d6 yeah so it does seem as though queen e2 you might want to test it with your own engines it seems as though this is a subtle so it makes it a double pawn sacrifice this position it seems as though black can be put under huge pressure even though two pawns up here uh, so yeah maybe yeah leader on higher ids i think actually it is the case that on higher IDs it was actually found this whole queen e2 concept so it's fa it's fascinating it really is quite fascinating so basically there's an undertone of the form pawn which becomes significant under various conditions of queen infiltration on on this side it's kind of past the ball to the, the goal hanger in a nutshell in a nutshell uh, but yeah there's some very very complicated variations there to check out uh, another one simply a6 the nudging by the way uh, is just losing two pawns and white's going to end up with a big advantage there uh, so yeah check out those variations let me know what you think queen e2 yeah it seems as though that was uh, a great shot
to and speak. Queen d2 though was played in the game. Rook c5. And it shows great potential of to reach these good positions. Uh, so Rook takes c5 and now undermining the center f3. Uh, trying to blast down a rook down the e file. c4, f takes, f takes, rook e1. Here, bishop h2. That pawn in the center is quite dangerous as well as that one. Queen e2, check. Queen d5. Queen g4 hitting the rook. That's shielded. Hitting the pawn, protected. Yep. Yeah. And now until here, queen takes e4. So we're now equal on pawns. Uh, leader's now a pawn up. But I believe this is uh, getting into basically table-based territory. It's just a draw, actually. It's just only enough for a draw, basically, this position. Uh, it's table-based territory. And in fact, I could sh I could stop basically showing you the game now. Because it's, it's basically, it's not even stockfish. It's just like playing a, a table base here. But I'll just show you the moves, the final moves. This is um, quite a lot of moves. <laughs> Leela tries to win this drawn position. Uh, but yeah, the main interesting maze of variations, I believe, I've shown you. So this is just, let's just fast forward this. And um, really, I think, yeah, the main interest for me of the game has gone now. And there's been some talk about the table-based strategy that should be used to avoid... Uh, so sometimes Leela has been slipping up into table drawn positions or rather sucked into those from uh, even much weaker engines than Stockfish. The, the, the most notable one was the Crafty incident. So yeah, Leela loses the pawn now. It clearly should be agreed a draw. <laughs> and it's just played on and on. On and on and on. Uh, but yeah, uh, this, this was a bit of a middle game there's middle game potential to be increased and there's also end game transition potential to be increased to avoid in particular getting draws out of technically winning end games but that wasn't the case here in the way Leela played it actually what is I believe more interesting is the other encounter which I would like to show you pretty soon uh, so yeah there was a critical position in there which seemed to justify the form pawn in many variations and the double pawn sacrifice basically so we're talking super dynamic play on the queen side which somehow links up connecting the dots with the form pawn in this game but anyway that's super high level middle game chess Lila's not there on that aspect yet but the biggest issue in the tournament so far is this transitioning trying to avoid in uh, to transition to drawn end games when opponents are worse they're able to do that, it seems, quite frequently against Leela, getting perfect blockade scenarios quite often. But yeah, uh, there was no advantage there after in the game continuation in this particular game. Uh, but it was just in the middle game, there was did seem to be a, an improvement possible. Okay. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.